guys, welcome back to the shop today. We're going to be talking about hand saws. Hand saws play a great role in my shop because I don't have a table saw. These work great for breaking down the main material, getting things to rough dimension, and also some of the saws that I use even help with cutting out the curves. There are two main saws that I use here in the shop, and one is a rip saw and one is a cross cut saw. The length of my saws vary between 30 inches and 18 inches in length. On the smaller end, anything 24 inches or under, you pretty much hear being called a panel saw. This right here is one of my shorter saws, and this is is a little rip saw. This has a different kind of handle on it. This is a more or less a saw that you can change out the different blades on it for more of a DIY person back in the day. They used to switch out the saw blades by just flipping that up and they could slide the saw out, put on a different blade, and they'd be ready for their next project. But this is one of my shorter saws and if this was an actual hand saw, it would be called a panel saw. This craftsman saw right here is a great beginner saw. This was my very first saw ever. It is pretty much a combination saw. I can use it for rip or cross cut. The teeth are sharp right to begin with, yet they don't sharpen very well after you get done using it after a while. I've used this one for a lot of different projects, rip and cross cut. But this was my very first saw, it was like $20, and it's a great beginner saw to get you into the hand saw. For my next hand saw that I ever got, I purchased this Stanley Miter Box saw. It came with the Miter Box, and I needed this one because it had the hard back on it. It was going to be cutting good for tenons, and it was pretty much needed just to do that job. And that's why I purchased that one saw. For this saw, it worked really well for a long time. The blade is a little bit thicker, but it works great for the main tenons, great for a beginner saw, cutting miters and stuff. The handle on it is a little bit flexible, which makes it a little bit weird to use after using the actual like wooden handled hand saws for so long just because of the flexibility of it. But this also is a great beginner saw. Comes with the modern box. You guys can purchase these at the big box stores. When I started doing finer joinery, looking at dovetails and stuff, I went ahead and was walking through Sears one day and saw this saw right here labeled dovetail saw. This sometimes is also referred to as a gent saw just because of the handle design and the history behind this type of saw. Now this saw blade is very thin, works great for cutting right on the line or right next to the line for when you're cutting finer joinery. The teeth, however, on this saw is set up a little weird to me because of how the set is. And the set is which way the teeth are leaning off the end of the blade. For this saw blade, there's four teeth going this way and then one coming this way. And here you can see the pattern of it. You can see where that one tooth right there is leaning one way, one right there leaning one way. And there's four in between each one of those teeth. So now as I stated earlier with that one dovetail saw, the teeth were kind of awkward in how they were set. I did not really want to mess with them resetting them. I just wanted to leave the saw with how it is. It cuts fine. But for doing fine straight lines, sometimes it can kind of go off to one side just because of how the set is. So my next purchase that I had to make was this bigger back saw. The blade is a lot thinner. It's about the same as that dovetail saw. And the set, like I said, this one goes that way, the other tooth goes this way. They alternate back and forth. And here's the distant back saw. It's a 14 tooth per inch saw and you can see that it does not have any weird creases like that one craftsman dovetail saw did. We dove into some of the smaller hand saws and we know what the dovetail saw is, what the coping saw is, and you guys know what a back saw is. It's got that piece on the back to help keep the blade a lot stiffer. So let's get into the bigger hand saws and discuss what the difference is between the rip and the cross cut saw and also look at what happens with the difference between the teeth between like an 8 point cross cut and an 11 point cross cut or a 5 point rip saw versus the higher number rip saw. The difference between two saws is which way they cut on a board. A rip saw is pretty much following the grain 
ripping the board apart. The crosscut saw does exactly its name, it goes across the grain. The higher number of teeth per inch saw that you have, the smoother of a cut that you will have as well. The lower number of teeth that you have on a saw means that it's got it's going to take away more material quicker, you'll make the cut quicker, but your edge will also be a lot rougher. Here are two of my rip saws. This one has a warranted superior medallion and an invincible etch. This one right here is a Spears and Jackson saw. And this one is kind of special because it's got the split nuts on the back side. This one dates early 1900s to maybe later 1800s. It's got a little nib on there right, right there. This one also has that. What that is made for, I haven't really ever found out. Nobody seems like they really know why that is part of the saw. So there are a couple ways that you can tell what TPI that your saw blade is. This one is marked right here 6. The Spears and Jackson one is marked right here and it says 5. If your saws aren't marked though, you guys can easily take a ruler, line up one inch and line up the other one and count how many teeth are in between the that inch. Now both of these saw blades have a lot of life left underneath that saw handle which is really good. For my purchases I've never really seen rip saws sharpened way down like I have crosscut saws and that's because these just aren't used as much as the crosscut saws. When I find older saws like the Spears and Jackson one I haven't really even touched this one. I don't want to really ruin any of the history on it. I might one day take the rust off and clean it up a little bit but I don't want to really mess with this saw because of its age. So let's go ahead and look at this rip saw and see how it cuts, the way the teeth are filed and other such things. The rip saw is filed different from the cross cut saw by it getting filed straight across. The cross cut saw has the teeth filed at a little bit of a bevel and it acts as a chisel to take away the material where the rip saw pretty much just plows through it. Let's go ahead and get this rip saw out and go take it to a piece of wood and I'll show you guys how it cuts. So here we've got a simple piece of pine. We've got the grain direction going this way and that's what this is meant for. We'll just line this up on the side of that saw or the pencil mark and you always just start lightly. If you start to force it, it starts to jam up. As you can see, it's really taking away a lot of material very quickly. So as you can see, if you want to get into hand tools, it's very important to have a specific rip saw just for breaking down material because of how quick it can cut along the grain. Let's go ahead and talk about the cross cut saw now. Here are two of my cross cut saws. This one on top is a recently restored one. This I didn't know what it was and it ended up being an Atkins hand saw. It is an 8 TPI and again you measure it by just putting up a ruler to the teeth and then counting how many teeth are in between and then here is a, another one this one is a distant and this one is an 11 tpi and it says it right there as you can see this saw has a lot more teeth and the teeth are a lot smaller than what this Atkins saw is. There's less teeth they're, and they're bigger. The gullets are deeper. When you go to file saws like this, you have multiple size files that you can use. This smaller file is an extra slim file and it would be for filing something with 11 teeth or probably more. And then this one right here is just a slim file and it would fit something like these or a rip saw with a few more teeth. Now for this saw right here, the difference between the cross cut and the rip saw was that with the rip saw, you would go straight across each tooth and with a cross cut saw, you go at an angle 
with the teeth. The way that the crosscut saw works is you pretty much have little chisels that you make with the teeth. As you're cutting, the wood just slices away with the file-like teeth. And as you go in and out of the wood, the debris falls out from in between the teeth. And the set, which is how the teeth lean side to side, that creates the gap of where your saw is going to go. So if you're having trouble with your saw blade sticking in your wood, you need more set on your teeth. And sometimes if your line and your saw start getting all wavy, you probably have too much set in your teeth. You're making too much of a gap and your saw blade tends to wander. So this saw blade in my vise right now is an 11 point tooth and this one right here is an 8 point tooth. You might be wondering what the difference is, why you wouldn't be able to just use an 8 point tooth for everything and keep a 6 point tooth rip saw and just be done with it. Well you can. The difference between these two saws right here for cross cuts is that one makes a finer cut than the other. We will first take a look at cutting the, a line real quick with this Atkins saw. This one is an 8 TPI and we'll see what kind of result we get. So now we got the distant 11 TPI handsaw and we're going to cut along the line and see the result after we get done with this one. So here is the result of both of these saws on this one piece. This came from the 8 TPI crosscut and this one came from the 11 TPI crosscut. And you can see that this cut is a lot smoother. This inside is a lot smoother. This one's a little bit rough. You can actually feel the tooth marks in on this side where you can barely feel any kind of bump on this one. I mean, it's smooth. So you don't really have to do much cleanup on that one. Whereas this one, you might have to take it over to a shooting board. All right, well, there you guys have it. There's a little bit of info on some saws for you guys. The difference between the rip and the crosscut saw and also how to choose which TPI to use. Just remember that when you want to use a rip saw, it's when you're going along with the grain. When you're going across the grain, you obviously want to use a crosscut saw. If you guys want a smoother cut, use a higher TPI. If you guys want it to cut a little bit quicker and don't really mind a little bit rougher of an edge, use a lower TPI. And remember, you guys don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on your saws right away. If you guys are just getting into the hand saws, Go out and get a cheap saw. They sell them all the time at the big box stores. You guys can get them. Usually they will work for both cross and rip cut. And it's a great way to just get into the hand saws. If you have recently purchased a bunch of old saws and are looking to restore them, I highly recommend this book, Keeping the Cutting Edge. This one tells all sorts of details on how to sharpen saws what the difference between angles and the bevels and everything like that is. It's got a lot of the terms in there, fleam, saw set, there's a bunch of different terms in there. You guys can find this probably on eBay or Amazon and it's not that expensive and it's a great uh, book to add to your shelf. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit of something that you may not have known before. If you guys did enjoy it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome and hit that subscribe button. I put out two videos per week. One is a vlog or a video like this and then the second will be out on Fridays and that is the actual project video. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the week and I'll see you guys on the next video.